Hello, I'm Chef James Swan. My name is Nordin Topham. I'm a chef from the UK. We're arriving in the morning markets in Tawau, Sabah. Nordin and I will discover the perfect ingredients for the upcoming dinner on the 31st of October. Good morning, Selamat datang, ladies and gentlemen. Please allow me to introduce you. Welcome to the warm welcome of our flight heading to Tingting Zero. Hello. Hi, thank you. Malaysia is close to the equator, high humidity, high heat. All year round, there's not so many seasons, but you've got this wide variety of plants that are growing, lots of exotic produce. And what struck me was the freshness of the local ingredients. It's a market which thrives from a basically daily picking and delivering to that, that market. Yeah. We're now en route to the aquaculture farm in Tawau. We're here to discover the first hybrid grouper. It's a new species and a development of a marine sustainability project. Why do we choose to work with this fish? And what is so fabulous about this fish? The meat is like a village chicken. It's sweet, creamy, and filled with collagen. Ooh, that's... As a chef, the most important thing when we take the life of an animal is to do it as humanely as possible. The Japanese created a method of killing the fish, which is the fastest and the most humane method. And this involves spiking the hind brain to cause instant brain damage and then insertion of a spike up the spinal cord. And this destroys the nerves which prevents the reflex action which would otherwise deteriorate the quality of the flesh, both in terms of flavour and texture. So the texture of the hybrid grouper is very dense. It's got meaty flesh with lots of connective tissue and a, and a thick skin. I think take it back to the kitchen and find the best way to process this fish. And that's going to take some work. Do we steam it in the same way that the Chinese do in the traditional method? Do we poach it gently? Or do we maybe slow cook it in sous vide and then gently sear to try and render the fat down in the skin? It's really interesting. If we look at the fish, when it's half cooked, the connective tissue is actually really, really pronounced. So this is the part that's making it feel and taste like a white, like, you know, like chicken or, or, or actually more towards like a pork. Mm. Don't you agree? Yeah. Let's, let's see how it goes. The trick is to try to make the connective tissue edible and the skin edible as well. If we could achieve that, that would be fantastic. Hennessy XO Odyssey is a sensorial journey. A journey to explore and illustrate the rich tapestry of the cognac's taste and feel. I met Nordin in Hong Kong on a gastronomy project. When I first met Nordin, what was the most impressive thing about him is his focus in the purity of ingredients. For this Hennessy XO Odyssey, we wanted to bring forth the beauty and the diversity of our landscape and the purity of ingredients as we discover it. So with my focus in elevating Malaysia's heritage and culture and Nordin's focus in nutrition and the nourishment of the mind, we promise you an odyssey that's never been seen before. Royal rice grain is the highest grade of rice grain uniquely to the region of Borneo. It's grown in the hills of Sabah. Not only a staple diet, but also a key ingredient in the fermentation of a local moonshine called Lihing or Tapai. To the ancient Greeks, they believe fire is one of the four basic elements that compose all things in the universe. To most cultures, fire is sacred and gives life all power. To us chefs, fire is the heart of our cooking. In cognac making, the distillation process requires good heat and fire in order to produce the highest grade of eau de vie, which is the water of life. 
In the village, we met that night with the village chief who described the tapai making process, how this was a sacred ritual and something that was approached with a, a real solemn approach and that this was a technique passed down from generation to generation. And this struck a chord with me because I feel that we're at risk of losing that respect for food that I believe we need to nurture. According to traditional Chinese medicine, the tapai wine is warming to the body and it's used to strengthen and balance the qi. Very clean, very delicious, very good. The jungle of Sabah is full of abundance. Nordin and I now will go into the jungle to seek inspiration provided by Mother Nature. We will look for the perfect ingredients for the upcoming dinner. It was wonderful to see wild avocados in their natural habitat. Nearby we found the bangbangan, wild mango. I picked it up and peeled it and it had this incredible flavour of onion, which was most unexpected. I was lucky in my career to get the opportunity to study nutrition and to be able to apply this in my work. And this has very much influenced the way I think about food, how I process them in the kitchen and how we cook them finely to serve to our guests. I think what is important to me is, is finding ingredients which are of noble origin. And what does that mean? It means ingredients that come from a source that has been carefully protected, carefully looked after, has been harvested at the right time and minimises the time from the time that it's harvested until the time I get it into the kitchen. Tuhao is a wild ginger stem that is indigenous to the jungle. To extract the stem, we have to shave until you reach the tender inner of the ginger stem. As a Malaysian, I wanted to share the generosity of diversity, colour and the beauty of our country through a journey of the senses. I want to capture and share every essence and emotion I felt when I learned of a new ingredient from the land we call home. As a chef, food is not just how it chemically reacts in the mouth. It is about the emotion hidden in our library of memories. Each memory of our childhood crushes and important moments that can be generated when we unlock those precious aroma, taste and sight related to it. I wanted the food to nourish the mind and remind my guests the forgotten heroes behind the scenes. I want to share the process of creation and the hours of methodical experimentation in order to have what is perfectly laid on the plate in front of them. This odyssey is about Malaysia, our home and our favourite cognac, Hennessy XO. So after our experience in the village eating this wonderful chicken dish, we decided we were going to have a go at making our own tapai. This involved finding the correct yeast. 
which we were told was available at local markets. We went to a couple of markets without luck and then eventually found the local yeast at a small town called Ka Wang. They're both similar taste, yeah. both for making papayas. So one is for bigger, this is one for smaller. Can I have one of each? Yeah. Satuni. So we were very surprised to find a cheese factory in Sabah. It's not something that we were expecting to find out here. James and I were invited to go inside to witness the production of this preparation of this artisan cheese. There's hot water going around the bin. Yeah. Where they were taking milk from local dairy producing cows to produce a range of interesting cheeses from cheddar to camembert and brie. Malacca was a major port destination in the 16th century and it became the main spice route between the East and the West. Such importance attracted other huge powers like China and Portugal to arrive in Malacca to trade. The Ming Emperor emphasized on the Chinese-Malay trade relations by sending waves of Chinese immigrants to Malacca to trade. They intermarried the locals here in Malacca and thus a rather unique ethnic was born, the Baba and Nyonyas, also known as the Paranakas. Let's go and experience their unique culture and cuisine. So, shall we start? Please. Alright, so... Very excited. Okay, the, the word Kluwa is called Tengyam Idil, the scientific name. Uh, idil meaning it's edible. Uh, it's actually poisonous. The Keluak is the fruit of an indigenous tree that is actually poisonous. It contains hydrogen cyanide. And what I found interesting was how the traditional technique had learnt to work with this ingredient and to make it edible by process of fermentation in ash for 40 days. So, um, you have to soak it um, for like minimum two days, and scrub it off all the earth, and then this will soak for two days. We tasted many ingredients and were exposed to some really interesting herbs and spices that were very new flavour profiles and very interesting. The journey with Hennessy, XO and James in Malaysia has been one of discovery. Having the opportunity to learn more deeply about a country's food culture and heritage only enriches one's own understanding. So. Welcome to KL. How would you like if we were to go on a 12-hour non-stop eating trip around town? Sounds good. Well, Malaysia is all about food, food, food. So we eat 24 hours round the clock. It doesn't matter if you're hungry or whether you, whether you just want a light bite, it's around the clock. So let's go and find out some local street food. Come on. Let's go. Oh, 
Well, James, thank you very much. It's been an incredible trip. I think we've discovered some amazing ingredients and met some truly inspiring people. I've eaten some great food and I look forward to serving a wonderful dinner at the Hennessy EXO event. Well, I'm glad you had a good time and enjoyed the food. I hope we managed to show you some colours of the country. I hope that whatever we've tasted will spark some new ideas. I look forward to a great collaboration and it's going to be a great odyssey. So here's to a good collaboration going forward. Cheers. Cheers. The complex flavours in Hennessy XO excite the palate and offer rich contour and contrast. This opened the door to unique experiences. It is an invitation to awaken the senses. Every perception varies depending on the palate, experiences and vision of each individual. Each drop of Hennessy XO is an odyssey. Don't wait to experience greatness.